the number one wealth killer that no one talks about. In this episode, I'm going to share with you the thing that is killing your wealth that is in plain sight of you. And most people are just missing it. Most people do not realize this is the thing that is killing their wealth. And it is something that can be solved very easily. It's just going to take a little bit of knowledge. So I'm going to share with you what that is. Let's go. Noel. Yeah, she can fix that. You gotta get it done. No, you need to do it better. Well, she can fix that. Yeah, she can fix that. Investment to get back. Trying to get a big stack. She can fix that. Let's fix that. Most people think the thing that's killing their wealth is the fact that they drink coffee every day from their special place or they eat out for lunch every day and they go to little restaurants. And yes, these are definitely things that you are probably wasting money on. And that is definitely something you probably could be investing that money into something else. Absolutely. And you probably should. If you are wasting lots and lots of money eating out and getting your hair done or buying, you know, items that you do not need, purses, clothes, shoes, you know, depreciating assets, things that do not go for up in value, that is going to be the key. But there is one thing, one really big depreciating asset that you have most likely in your driveway that is killing your wealth. And so let's talk about it. It is, it is your car. Most people do not know and are spending way too much money on their car. But I think the thing that you don't know is it's not just the car. Most of us need a car. OK, no, I, I make hundreds I of thousands of dollars cars. per year. Um, but that was one of the ways I paid myself through college um, when I went the first time before I dropped out when I was in my early 20s. I worked at a Honda dealership. So I know and love cars and I always have. And I've, I, I waste money on cars now that I have a little money. That was one of the first things I did. I at one point I had like 13, 14 cars. That's why I started the rental car business. But let me tell you the secret. The big secret is most of you that the wealth is being killed by the car is because the payments are really high and that is this is because of you having bad credit. Most car notes are just way too high and most of this is due to bad credit. You're paying a high interest because you are a high risk person. Now, not everybody is overpaying for a car, but most of us are. Quite frankly, uh, black females, African-American females, statistically speaking, pay the most for cars, Latino women being like right behind that number. But let's talk about that because of bad credit. So if you have bad credit, know that this is something that you can fix. I literally have a link below to Creative Credit Solutions. My friends, they actually help me fix my poor credit and they can help you. They've helped so many people fix their bad credit, creative credit solutions. My friends, there is a link below for a free consultation. They will help you pull your credit. They will tell you what you could do to get your scores up. Most of us can get hundreds of points just by doing just a few things on our credit. So if you are paying too much for your car, we're going to talk about that in a second, how to fix that. But in most cases, it's because of the bad credit and high interest rates, which means most of us are paying a lot of car note and most of it is going towards interest and we're barely paying down the interest and we're very, 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 we're paying down very little of the principal. So when you have a car note payment, you have principal and you have interest. So say, for example, your payment, and this is a crazy stat. We just saw, I just pulled a stat that said, um, Nearly 15% of all car loans in 2022 were over $1,000 per month. This is a record high. So if most people now have a car note over $1,000 and take it from someone that does have a car note over $1,000, I do have a couple of those and I have, um, but I did not do this until I was really solid in some of the things. And again, I was trying to monetize the cars. But most of us, most of you know, I'm talking to you, you probably just use your car and you're not monetizing. You're using it to drive to work, drive your kids to school, drive to run errands, drive to the grocery store. Most of us live in a city where you absolutely need a car. Public transportation is just not what it needs to be. So we have these really need. We have this big need for a car. And unfortunately, it has become a liability. It is not an asset, but a car can be an asset and it should be. But let's go with the number one reason. You have bad credit. Again, you can fix that. Use the link below. 
um, call creativecreditsolutions.net, see what they can do. That's an absolutely free call. That's a resource for you. But if you already know that you have bad credit and you have a subprime auto loan, meaning you have a auto loan that you got with bad credit and they financed it for you, but they financed it at a very high rate. Now you are in what? A situation where you are paying way too much in interest. I've seen car notes, people paying 20% in interest, 30% in interest. And this is crazy because all of their payments are going towards interest. Very little of it is going towards um, the actual principal and paying down that auto loan. So guess what? Year after year, month after month, making those car note payments, the balance on the loan isn't disappearing. It's just, it's barely being touched. So three years in, four years in, you're upside down on a car. So now this car absolutely is not an asset. Yes, it's a necessity. You need it to drive to work, but it is not really being an asset. It's not being used to actually help you make money. So we could turn that around. You can always refinance that car note. Okay, you can refinance your car loan. In many cases, I've seen people refinance their car loan from a 25% interest rate all the way down to a five just by fixing their credit and then refinancing. So again, if the situation is yours where you have bad credit, use the link below, call creativecreditsolutions.net, see what they can do or start working on fixing your credit on your own. Again, that, that I, I'm not gonna push you that you have to call Creative Credit Solutions, but it is just a resource that I wanna offer to you, a free consultation where they may be able to help you fix that bad credit and then you possibly can refinance the car loan and that would really help start building that wealth because again, the car note, the car loan is being paid down when you make those payments. That is so important. And so because most cars are financed, it is a wealth killer. So let's go into some other reasons because the car itself is the is the number one wealth killer that, that that's just going on in America right now. These very high car notes. Obviously, I said 15 percent of all car notes were over a thousand dollars. That is a record high. The average car loan is nearly oh, is over four hundred dollars. OK, the median, I should say, car loan. Uh, most people are paying five, six, seven hundred dollars a month for a car. Car prices are number two. The number two reason this is a wealth killer is because car prices are just through the roof right now. Um, with all of the demand for cars, the supply issues that we're having, car notes, the cars can do a lot now too. They're like computers on wheels. So the prices for cars have exploded. And there is this markup, literally people paying over what the car is valued. Certain cars, Porsches and Land Rovers. Again, I actually wanted one of the new Range Rovers. And the guy at the dealership offered me to pay like $50,000 over the car, um, what the MSRP was. I was like, yeah, whatever, dude. I don't want that car that bad. And you got to start having that same discipline. Unless you are super wealthy and you have lots of money and this is just um, discretionary cash that you have to spend, fine. If that's what you want to do with your money, we all waste the money. However, if you are trying to build your wealth and you're in that situation, Situation, absolutely do not pay over the sticker price for a car and just be upside down in a car. Car prices are just through the roof right now. Um, there's no real way to say that you should buy a new car. Quite frankly, um, you cars are depreciating assets, as I mentioned before. So guess what? That means they go down in value over time. So what does that mean? You buy a car today for $50,000 next year. At best, it's worth $40,000. It's not going to be still worth 50 or more importantly, like real estate and some of the other things you buy for 50. It's not going to be worth 60 or $70,000. Therefore, cars are not great investments. OK, they are not great great investments and take this as someone who actually has a rental car business. I've always said that cars are depreciating assets and they are not something that you're going to buy and it's going to go up in value. However, if you can get your cars to cash flow, like you have a Toro business or you have a rental car business where you're um, renting your cars out, then that is different. It's an asset for the business, but you have to make sure that car is cash flowing. That is important. And in many cases, you won't just want one car or two cars. You will want a fleet with five, six, seven, eight cars. So you can truly have a a business the same way that you would do a real estate. As I've mentioned, one rental property is not a business. Five, six, seven, eight cars um, or homes is a business. So having one rental car, not really a business. Having one rental property, not really a business. But if you keep going and you create a business, you actually can get business credit and business funding and get way more cars. So it will really help you. So car prices are number two reason. Number three, 
insurance and fees. So when you're buying your car, obviously not only do you have the car note, you have insurance and insurance is again through the roof. Depending on what state you live in, your insurance, your car insurance could be three, four, five hundred dollars per month. And again, depending on the car and all of the features that it has, I've seen people paying a thousand dollars per month in car insurance. And again, six, seven hundred dollars with a car note. This is just eating up such a big percentage of people's incomes that you have to get these insurance costs down. You have to take the time to shop around for cheaper insurance. You literally can do that. Now, is insurance important? Absolutely. You have to have insurance. OK, this is not something that you're going to be able to forego. So one of the things that you need to make sure of, too, is when you're buying a car, look at what the insurance costs are. I, quite frankly, did not not know the insurance costs. I'm going to give you my actual example. When I bought the Lamborghini, I was so excited. Oh, I got the money to do this. They're not going to ask me for any money down. I just got to give them this car and they're going to give me the keys to the Lamborghini. Well, guess what? I had the hardest time finding insurance. It is an exotic car and there were some places that just would not even do the insurance. And then when I did get insurance, it was very expensive and it was kind of making me rethink the decision. Okay. Quite frankly. Um, but it's a necessity. So you have to look at what the insurance and the fees are for your car. Okay. Very important. Number four, as I've mentioned, cars are a depreciating asset, meaning they are not going up in value. So this is a wealth killer. If you are looking to grow your net worth, what do you have to do? You have to get it where your assets are more than your liabilities. It's truly all net worth is. They just take all of the assets that you have, your homes, your cars, your retirement funds, everything that you have, and you subtract the liability on it, the mortgage notes, the, the auto loans, the, those types of things. And so when you look at what a car is worth and the fact that it's going down in value every single day, it is not usually adding to your net worth. So it is a depreciating asset. It is a terrible investment. I keep saying that we really do not need a nice car. Um, let me be clear from someone that, you know, lives life and I enjoy, you know, I, I think we should have the things that we want, but it is not a wealth builder. It is a wealth killer. So who cares what type of car you drive? Buy a used, a, a nice used car, a, a good car, a Honda, a Toyota, you know, a Mercedes, a used one and something that is good. And actually Mercedes might not even be the great because the maintenance, that's my next thing. Repairs and maintenance is a, just another thing. So what it cost to repair and maintain the car. Like I've said, I have some high end cars. I also have, you know, Nissans and uh, Dodge Caravans and thing and Chevrolet Silverados. But then I also have Porsches and, and Land Rovers and Lamborghinis. And the maintenance is ridiculous. Um, an oil change on a Porsche Cayenne, for example, could, could be five, six hundred dollars just for the oil change. Then they have these maintenance packages, A, B, C, D, they'll tell you. And they'll be three, four thousand dollars for just these minimal things. So if you are working each day and you are working to build your wealth, do not waste your money on these things. This is nothing to build wealth. Um, this is not going to be making you any money unless you have figured out how to monetize your car. Do not spend a lot of money on it. Uh, if you are not using it to maybe get clients, don't spend a lot of money on that. Most of your clients, yes, you know, unless you're dealing with high end clients, most of them are not going to be impressed by that. So if you're just driving it up to an office, even if you're a manager and you're saying, oh, I want to drive a nice car into the office, that's not impressing your staff. So there's nothing in it for you. So don't do it. OK, repairs and maintenance. And number six, leasing, leasing cars is an absolute idiotic thing to do. Take it from someone that is currently in a lease of a car and cannot wait for this lease to be over. Okay. I leased a car, uh, under the advice of one of my accountants, um, you know, about the tax write-off. When you lease a car, you actually can write off the entire lease payment in your business. Okay. So I leased the car in my business's name. It was this wonderful idea where I would be able to write off the entire, you know, car note. And this would help with, you know, some of the, the income that we have and to just use the, the money and, and make money with it and not have this big tax bill. Well, it just did not work out. And the car note, um, is really high. And what we write off, it just, it just was a bad decision. And again, I'm letting you know of a decision that I made, advice that I got, something that I tried, and it just 
just did not work out. And I've leased two cars. I leased uh, the Range Rover. And again, we ended up buying it out. Um, and I sold it to someone. And then I have the Porsche Cayenne. And I'll take pictures with it. I go out to clients. I tried it to put that car on Toro. Um, that's a whole nother video that I could make. But it was an absolute disaster putting it on Toro because it is an e-hybrid. It's very hard to understand this car. It's a Porsche. It's it's new. Um, people would love to see it, but they couldn't drive it. They couldn't figure out how to start it. Um, they would say the car is not starting because it was in electric mode and it was just an absolute disaster. And I never made the money that I wanted to make on it. And I've been in this lease and just could not wait for this lease to be over. It's a three year lease. We're in that third year. I'm going to have like two or three more payments. And then I'm happily giving them that car back and I will never, ever lease a car again. Okay. And I'm telling you, and I was a multimillionaire when I did that and had lots of money. And it still was one of the worst financial decisions I ever made. It is a wealth killer. Leasing cars just is not a smart idea. Okay. It is just not a smart idea. The tax system still works where if you have a car note, no, you cannot write off the car note, but you can write off the mileage, you can write off the expenses. There's just so many other things in the tax code where you can get the, almost the exact same write off and actually own the car and be able to trade it in. The problem with a lease is there's very, it's very hard to get out of a lease. It is ridiculously hard. Um, the termination fees, you end up just having to stick it through and somebody buying out the lease and some of these other things absolutely just do not work. It's a bad decision. So again, leasing cars is a wealth killer. It is a dumb decision. It is a dumb decision that I made and is a decision I'm telling you do not make. Okay. All right. Last but not least, the answer to most people not having wealth is they need to earn more money. Quite frankly, you cannot save your way to rich. Take it to someone who tried to eat, you know, not eat out eat lunch each day and eat in the break room out of a Tupperware and cook my own lunch and eat from home and um, not do the Starbucks coffee each day and all of these other things that they tell you to budget. Yes, these are things that you should do because you should become more disciplined. However, this is not going to make you rich. You cannot save your way to rich. Therefore, you need to start earning more money and start focusing on earning more money. You can invest your money and start seeing returns on that investment. You can start a business, get business credit, get business funding, buy inventory, buy things at a cheaper amount, like flipping cars, flipping houses, flipping um, couches. I know people that flip watches, you know, flip phones. There's different meaning. I buy it at a cheaper amount. I fix it up in some way and then I resell it at a higher amount. That is furniture. You can do this with so many things, furniture, cars, watches, glasses, um, you know, obviously home. And the, the, the bigger the thing, the more money you'll make. So obviously flipping houses is one of the things that I love to do because there's lots of profit in it. Obviously, you can make more money. You can flip one, two houses a year and never have to work the entire year. Most of the average um, profit on a fix and flip of a house is of over $65,000. So again, you flip two houses, you made 130 grand. You know, for some people, that is definitely enough money for the entire year to live off. And for most of the, us, it actually should be. Um, so again, the number one wealth killer being that car. So again, driving a car that you bought used that's in good condition, not having bad credit, that is going to be a serious wealth killer because when you have bad credit, you're overpaying for interest rates. You're overpaying even for insurance. As I mentioned, insurance costs are going through the roof and nowadays they check your credit and they actually factor that into the, the insurance rates and they are legally able to do this. So you gotta get that credit fixed. In many cases, it does not cost very much money and it will save you so much money and unlock the door to way more money um, where you could borrow even in your business's name. So again, if you have the bad credit or you're overpaying for these cars, the number one answer for most people is going to be able to is going to be to fix that bad credit, get those credit scores up, pay much lower interest rates, refinance out of those car loans, never get that get back in that situation again. Use the link below to reach out to Creative Credit Solutions. My friends use my code creativecreditsolutions.com net forward slash Noel, or if you call them, let them know that your friend Noel Randall sent you and they will treat you very kindly, give you the best advice that they can give you. They will look through. They are really been helping so many people. And again, they truly helped me fix my bad credit. And I have never had to have those same situations. My credit score does not go, you know, back into those 500s and 600s anymore. It stays in the sevens and even the 800s. And this is due to the help and the coaching and the um, services that I got at Creative Credit solutions.net. So again, no pressure there. You can fix your credit on your own. I have playlists that teach you that. But again, this is a free consultation with Creative Credit Solutions where they can help you with that personal credit and possibly help you um, 
start building business credit through their other companies, um, just in Merch Consulting. So I just want to make sure that you have all of the knowledge, all of the resources, and all of the tools that you need to be successful. This is Noel to your success.